Johnny Walker White Walker, the new limited edition Johnny Walker for Game of Thrones. Does this offer limited flavors or is it a great addition for your collection? Stay tuned for the whiskey whistle. Hey my whiskey curious friends and Game of Thrones lovers, welcome to Whiskey Whistle, your wise choice in independent whiskey and spirits reviews. I'm Mark, the host of the show, and today we're going to be looking at this White Walker and find out what it's like. Interesting bottle. This was about $57 here in Winnipeg, that's where I'm, I live here, and uh, reasonably priced elsewhere, I think a little bit more than, uh, than Black Label and a little bit less, quite a bit less than uh, the green label. Anyway, let's go ahead and get that poured. This one is 41.7% ABV, and it's stated as being chill filtered down to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, usually chill filtration is something that people uh, in the whiskey, uh, the whiskey world think is a bad thing, but they've done that for a specific reason. And that's because they want you to drink this whiskey straight from the freezer. Anyway, so we're going to try that too. I've got a sample of this. Uh, it's been frozen. It's been in the freezer. Well, it's not frozen, but it's been in the freezer now for about three days and it should be well cold to see how that tastes when it's cold, when it's frozen. This one contains two main single malts. Those are Cardu and Klein Lisch both of which are very, very important for the Johnny Walker range of whiskeys. I also think, according to my palate, that this is also very similar to the red rye finish, which contained a grain whiskey known as Port Dundas. But that's just my own thoughts from taste. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, so we're going to check out the taste of this neat and with a bit of water and frozen. And then we'll also check this out in a couple of cocktails that are recommended for this White Walker. If you like this video, which I'm sure you will, why not hit subscribe right there and leave a comment. Have you tried this? Are you wanting to try it? I'd love to hear from you. All right, now let's check out the color first of all. What do you see there for color? Pretty much a standard whiskey shade, something like a medium amber. Uh, surely there's a little bit of colorant added E150A, but um, uh, again, according to my palette, not to a detriment and probably merely just to maintain um, a batch agreement amongst batches. Now this is limited edition. Does that mean there's not very many out there? No, there's tons of this out there. Uh, I'm guessing there are hundreds of thousands of bottles of White Walker um, all over the world, mostly in, of course, USA, where Game of Thrones is made. Um, <laughs> is it made in, in USA anyway? Uh, lots of British actors in there. Um, anyway, so we'll get that uh, tasted pretty soon. Let's check out the legs as well. I want to know what those legs are like. Yes, whiskey has legs too. So let's see what they look like. How fast are they? This might tell us whether or not we can expect something kind of um, silky on the palate. So here we go. Get that Johnny Walker label to the front mark. All right. Well, it just kind of sheets down in a single layer. Not a great bunch of legs going on there, but look at the secondary uh, legs just starting to drip down now, fairly slow. So that's kind of interesting to me. This may actually have a very nice mouthfeel. And according to my memory, it does. All right, now just before we taste this, a little bit about uh, this whiskey, White Walker, what is this about? Well, that's a character from Game of Thrones and the book uh, that, uh, that spawned the series, which I think was called A Song of of fire or something like that. Well, on this series, the White Walker shows itself, 2011, and this was in the very first episode called Winter is Coming. Interesting episode. The White Walker shows up in the woods, uh, slices off this guy's head, and then throws it over to the guy's, the dead guy's friend. Pretty grisly scene and it really sets the stage for what's happening with these uh, white walkers who apparently have been sleeping or not seen for something like 4,000 years. All right now let's check out the nose shall we? Now two scents here that are unmistakable for me are menthol and eucalyptus. A little bit of mint as well 
And that actually really reminds me of winter, so that's pretty cool. Now, it's not to say that there's mint or eucalyptus added to this. Uh, those are naturally occurring flavors that come from the distillation of uh, the malted barley in the case of single malt and uh, corn in the case of grain whiskey in Scotland. What else do I get here? There's a little bit of something um, uh, grainy here, like a bunch of um, um, a bunch of oats or a bunch of wheat that's been uh, uncooked or slightly toasted even. I also get a hint of citrus, something like lime. So I think you can get the sense of what this is going to be tasting like. It's not especially sweet um, on the nose anyway. In fact, it's slightly dry. And this actually really reminds me of uh, red rye finish, uh, which is another Johnny Walker, uh, a sample of which I have here. We'll talk about that in a minute. I think there's some similarities between these and I wouldn't be surprised if they perhaps used, used um, the rye casks for something in the making of this whiskey, giving those uh, minty eucalyptus type of flavors, uh, which is very common in rye whiskey. All right, onto the palate. Cheers, everybody. got a fairly sharp arrival definitely not very old whiskey probably something on the order of whiskeys between I don't know ages of let's say five and maybe 12 years old at the upper end but the interesting thing is um, as it develops on your palate you get some very interesting sweet flavors that I've actually never tasted in other whiskeys hmm So you get this dry, um, spicy beginning, a little bit sharp. And the finish now, let's get right into the finish here. Uh, as I smack my lips, I'm getting some um, caramel covered, sweet covered cranberries or dried cranberries, maybe dipped in like a vanilla sauce. And so it's got that sweetness, but also has a real astringency to it. And those are the flavors that I get here. We'll try that once more. Mm. Ginger. Uh, that's the main spice here. Not a lot of cinnamon. Not a lot of nutmeg. In fact, no nutmeg whatsoever. The finish actually might have something like cinnamon hearts. Um, the spicy little red candies. Uh, but less sweet than that and a little bit sharper. Hmm. And again, that finish, very astringent, very dry, and something like cranberries, you know, that, that particular flavor in cranberries that you don't get from other, um, other fruits. Anyway, so astringent, a little bit of cranberry on the finish. And again, that's very interesting. I have not tasted much like this. In fact, this might be the only whiskey that I've tasted with distinct cranberry flavors. And again, those are very much a winter type of fruit that you get starting from, say, Thanksgiving through to Christmas uh, in, the, in the form of cranberry sauce. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of water. Whoops. There. And I'm going to put a little whiskey hat on there. Now I'm going to go get that frozen one and we'll check that out together. So bear with me for a second here. All right, I'm back. I've got my frozen sample here. Um, I put that in a glass sample bottle. I wrapped it in wet, uh, wet paper towels and froze it solid for a few days. So let's go ahead and get that poured. If I can get it open, that is. All right, got it open. That's frozen solid. Three days in the freezer. All right. All right, so we're going to pour that into the other glass here. Oh, and it looks very syrupy, uh, so that's quite interesting. 
And uh, just so you can see how cold it is, I'll let you see the condensation that's building up there. And uh, a little bit cloudy from the freezer, the chill filtration at 1.5 degrees Celsius. Well, it could be much lower than that, so that's a pretty good, uh, good level. And um, we'll check out a couple of things here. First of all, we'll see how those legs do when it's frozen. Oh yeah, barely moving at all. And uh, the nose when it's frozen, very subtle. Those sharp scents have gone. And what I'm getting here is a light vanilla and maybe a little hint of those cranberries. It's actually very, very light. All right, on the palate then, cheers again. It's very thick and syrupy. And the sharpness, again, the sharpness is pretty much gone. But that cranberry finish, cranberry dry finish is still there. Still very minty though. And a lot of eucalyptus now. And to me, this would be a great whiskey for, say, gin lovers, in my opinion. All right, so that's pretty interesting. No point in trying that with, uh, with water because uh, that'll just warm it up. Mm, but it's really very um, thick when it's frozen um, in the freezer. Anyway, so you should try that definitely. All right, now I wanna show you a couple more things. Um, so pretty cool bottle, right? It really looks like winter. Uh, you can see Johnny Walker uh, kind of presented as, uh, as a White Walker. Um, he's got his, uh, uh, the White Walker um, uh, sword that he's using there. So that's pretty cool instead of his cane. Ready to eat somebody. He's even got blue eyes. Can you see that? So that's pretty interesting. All right, now I want to show you what this looks like when it's frozen in the freezer. Uh, you're supposed to see an icy reveal. So let me reveal the icy reveal for you. All right, now I'm ready. Now let's check out that icy reveal, shall we? Are you ready? Here we go. Wow, can you see that? Winter is here. Right, so that's the icy reveal you get when you get the White Walker uh, from Johnny Walker. Pretty cool stuff. All right, now let's check out the original glass with a little bit of water added. On the nose, you get a little bit more of a grain effect, grain sweetness. A little bit less dryness, a little bit less astringency, and on the palate. A hint more sweetness, but it's still quite dry, still quite astringent. For me, the best thing about this whiskey is the finish. And uh, it's also quite nice frozen if you want to try something a little bit different with your whiskey. Hmm. Oh, and there's some, uh, some geese flying south for the winter. All right, now let's make two different uh, cocktails for you. First of all, that's going to be the um, uh, highball. Dump out the ice. And we'll put in both of my samples here, this one and this one. And I think we'll add a little bit more of this frozen one. All right. And to which we add some club soda. You could also add ginger ale. I prefer it less sweet, so this is my preference. Here we go. I'm a big fan of highballs. Let's get that mix a little bit. One more. When you're mixing highballs, don't stir them too much. You don't want to disturb the uh, uh, the uh, the bubbles. Don't disturb the bubbles. That's really important. All right. Cheers, everybody. It actually brings out a bit of the sweetness, which is interesting, and it really tones down that astringency. And, uh, and the bitterness. Hmm. Well, so that makes a very nice um, highball. I suggest you add a little bit more whiskey than you think you're gonna need because of that um, 
slightly lighter style of this whiskey. Mmm, that's more like it. Yeah, I would recommend about uh, one and a half to two ounces for a highball glass. And then we're also gonna try to make an old fashioned. So I've got a bit of sugar in there. I'm gonna add a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. A couple of drops, maybe there, that should be about good. Not that many, just a little bit. Add a little bit of water. Maybe a little bit more. And uh, I'm gonna use this as my muddler. Muddle, muddle, muddle. All right. And then we'll add a few cubes of ice. And we add our whiskey. Again, I'll use that one. Okay, that's up again about an ounce and a half. Eyeballing it. You probably should use a jigger, that would be smart. And again, I'll mix that up a little bit. Again, we add some club soda. And I mentioned lime for this particular whiskey. So I'm gonna add a lime garnish. You of course could add lemon uh, or even a little bit of um, um, a little bit of orange. There it is everybody, that's my White Walker Old Fashioned. Cheers. Well, it does make a very nice Old Fashioned. All right, folks, well, that was it. The only thing left to do here is to talk about the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score. So, folks, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Johnny Walker, White Walker, what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be 81 out of 100. Yes, you heard right. 81 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Johnny Walker, White Walker. Now, why so low? Well, it's a little bit expensive. Also, I find it a little bit too dry, too astringent. Uh, to drink neat. It is nice frozen, but I'm not sure that I would keep a bottle of this frozen just to enjoy cold. And for me, the way I drink whiskey, even if I poured it frozen, by the time I was halfway done, it would already be at room temperature. So you gotta keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so it's an interesting whiskey, an interesting project, excellent marketing and packaging, beautiful. It's a really beautiful bottle and uh, a really cool effect uh, with that White Walker, uh, with the White Walker, with the White, the White Walker bottle. Should we do that again? Uh, so I think that's a really cool thing here, um, is that they've actually done something very interesting with that, um, uh, the spray they put on that plastic that's actually temperature sensitive. And you get the winter, oops, wrong side. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> and you get the winter is here effect. Uh, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, and is it worth $57? In my opinion, no. Um, if you're a Game of Thrones lover and you like uh, Johnny Walker, this might be something great for you. Um, for me as, um, well, as a whiskey, I'm a bona fide whiskey lover. I like blends, I like single malts. To me, it's again, slightly dry, slightly astringent, a little bit too bitter, uh, not enough um, sort of sweetness there to carry through and make me want to drink that again and again. And I think it's a little bit young for, uh, for the price. So it's more expensive than the 12 year old, but it's definitely younger than 12 years old uh, as an average age of whiskeys. Again, that's an NAS whiskey. There's no age statement. Um, all right, anyway, so 81 out of 100. Where's the bottle? There it is. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know if you're gonna go and buy a bottle of this and if you are, uh, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna try that frozen? Are you gonna drink it neat? Do you like that astringency and the dryness? Um, what kind of cocktails are you gonna make with that? I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment, all right? And uh, hey, subscribe to Whiskey Whistle if you like this show and hit that notification button so that you don't miss the Whiskey Whistles. Um, and if you'd like to do a little bit more than that, you can check me out on Patreon. You can influence me uh, with a, a little bit of support, monthly support through Patreon, and you'll get lots of cool benefits like uh, a newsletter and advanced viewing 
ad-free of my content, all right? Does that sound good? I hope it does. Take care, everybody. I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.